What is a good weight wellness program? And how do you know if you are on one? So in today's chapter reading, we are finally coming to, I shouldn't say finally, I mean, it's been really fun. Uh, we are coming to the close of chapter one, which is a big, deep chapter. It's probably one of the deepest chapters of the book, which is why I separated it into four parts. If you want to go see any of the other parts, make sure that you tap on the video in my um like the little video icon on my Instagram profile, and that'll bring you to the Be Weightless um, playlist. And there you can start at the introduction and follow along. Uh, each one is about, the longest one is 20 minutes, but I'm keeping these shorter at about, um, you know, 10 to 15 minutes with a reading and then discussion, and we will go away. So today we have uh, the, the part section of what is a good wellness program and how do you know if you are on one? Feel free to comment and I will always go to the comments after I'm done reading or later on if you're watching the replay and let me know. Um, send me a private message if you wish, if you don't want, if you want to remain anonymous on these topics. Let's begin. Going by my experience, a good wellness program should make you feel like you are gaining energy. It's working. And you are losing weight if you have weight to lose, but you are not having to be so rigid about food intake that you are counting every last morsel. You shouldn't feel hungry. You should feel satisfied. A good wellness program is something that you can stick to for life, or refer back to during tough times. A good wellness program does not feel like torture and is something that you feel like you could get excited about doing for life. It makes you feel good, not punished. In control, not controlled. Satiated, not deprived. Enables you to trust and make your own decisions and not one size fits all at all times. Something you can easily adapt to where you are in your life right now. It includes all food groups, less the foods that give you inflammation, and we'll be touching more on this topic later in the book. I've always referred back to that first year of my accidental weight loss. <laughs> it was effortless. I just did what I could and I added on when I was ready. It was simple. I ate a little less. I cut out pop and juice and began reducing foods with preservatives. What I found was the healthier my body felt and became, the more I would feel and notice energy differences in my body. I just felt better. Whole foods made me feel energetic and light. Preservatives and sweets made me feel lethargic and even a little cranky. I would still go to McDonald's weekly, but I started ordering the kids' meal instead of the massive meals I would previously scarf down. Moving more started with walking and my son to school, then extending that, then adding weights, and then walking instead of taking the bus. Add to that a more active job. Once I began believing in myself that change was possible, I leaned in more. I added ankle weights and body weight exercises that I had learned from a Women's Day magazine. My clothes were starting to hang off me, and I bought my first ever piece of clothing in the normal sized fashion store. I was no longer in the plus sizes for the first time in my life. I'd see the changes most of the time, but standing naked in the mirror, I felt like nothing changed. <laughs> It all looked the same, just smaller. I think I expected this bikini model Barbie looking figure to just emerge from the layers of fat. How come I still have those dimples and sags? When I hit the single digits in clothing sizes, the scale stopped moving. I wanted more. What do you mean my weight is going up? It became extremely hard to keep those numbers steady. Why is this so hard now? I must have to do more. Those days we didn't have Google. 
<laughs> nor did I have the money to go and talk to somebody about it. My eyes became fixated on the messages on the newsstands at the grocery store lineups. Women's Day is the best, isn't it? Wouldn't you agree? It always has a woman on the front promoting an easy diet that made her lose a gazillion pounds effortlessly. Then they show you how to make the best cake ever. I'm not knocking the magazine. I learned a ton of good stuff from their publications. Lower in the newsstands were reporters calling out celebrities caught cheating on their diets or worse, letting themselves go. At that time, I really had no cravings. I was eating everything, just less of it. I was depriving I wasn't depriving or saying no. To lose weight, I was just trying to listen to my body. Signals of being satisfied, not full, and I definitely wasn't counting calories. But I was desperate to keep going, to keep losing. I started dieting. I started counting. Everywhere I looked for answers, I only found information saying that I had to do more exercise and eat less to bust through a plateau. Page Turner. Was that where I was? A plateau? Or had I reached my final destination? My doctor said, sure, most people want to lose five or more, five or 10 more pounds than their actual healthy body weight. You, Karen, are at a healthy body weight. However, when I measured my BMI, I was in the obese category. It wasn't enough for me. I wanted to be in the lean category. Now we have Google and we can find out more in a, in a moment than ever before. So if you type in how to lose weight, there are over, I can't even say this number, like 1 um, billion, 170 million hits on how to lose weight. Type in how to maintain weight loss and there are over 748,000 hits. Type in how to break a fitness plateau and you get 12,300,000 hits. All of them have similar information in them. How to maintain weight loss. <laughs> does have some good information in there. Okay, so let me back up for a second. All of them have similar information in them. How to maintain weight loss does have some good information in there, but you have to sift. And even then, it's really difficult to make a choice of what's good for you. I'm not a history major, but I did dive into the beginning of the diet industry. There are a ton of documentaries and articles on this very topic. After World War II, the economy needed stimulating and women were also wanting to look good for their husbands coming home. So diet pop started being advertised and the diet industry took off from there. There's a lot of information and diets to sift through, but not as much that talks about the mindset adjustments needed to bridge the gap. How to work to let go of the addiction of seeing the scale go down, living into new daily habits and actually being able to release yourself from the chains of diet and step into who you are as a person. Not a fat person, not a skinny person, but a whole person. There's a big gap in the industry when it comes to helping people to bridge the gap between the diet and eating energetically. The ugly stabilizing period where we are not only adapting to a place we've never been, but the body stops losing and begins fluctuating, otherwise known as a plateau. We are often told to work harder and eat less, when in fact, that can be the actual thing that never allows you any freedom. That is what this book is about. A solution to bring you through the gaps physically and mentally so that you can have your own Be Weightless blueprint and you can relax. Letting the body wars go. 
You are the one in control of your mind, body, and purpose, and definitely you got this. That's the end of chapter one. See, that, that was really fast today. So um, just a reminder, you can always see the recordings down below in um, the playlist. I've uh, made a full playlist. And uh, if you're not here live, then um, definitely still do engage. Here's the book, Be Weightless, Like Your Body, Love Yourself. We've just finished chapter one, The Ugly Side of Weight Loss. And let me know in the comments below if you would prefer a longer full chapter one reading rather than having it breaking up into four pieces. I just wanted to be mindful of the time that we spend together and not, you know, have this big, long audio that you need to listen to. But I'd be more than happy to do a reiteration of chapter one in its full length form if that's something you would like to hear. However, next week we are going to be reading a chapter two. Chapter two. I haven't decided if I'm going to break it up into two yet. Chapter two, two. Chapter two, we're going to do as a full whole. Actually, I just decided now, so you can hold me to that. And chapter two is defining your why timeline. And of course, we're going to start with story and we're going to go through the whole chapter. And if there's time, we will have discussion afterwards. Um, and uh, otherwise... <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks for joining me here. Like always, thank you for spending this time with me. And uh, I will see you again next week. Take care. Bye.